Thank you very much. I am honored to be here today and part of this Dutch Hydrogen Conference. I am looking forward to learning more about what is happening on this side of the ocean. I think this is a great forum to share ideas and share stories on the commercialization and rollout of both hydrogen and fuel cells. It has been very silent. And one of the reasons is that uh, we were working uh, very severe on the technology um, and we didn't uh, invest too much in lobbying, uh, although that will change now. Uh, the technology is ready for deployment and, uh, and we will lobby now in order to commercialize the technology uh, we developed in the meantime. First of all, my congratulations, my best wishes to the Dutch Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association on the happy occasion of their 10th anniversary. So what has happened up till now, uh, we have five application areas in the FCHJU. The first one is transport and infrastructure, so retail infrastructure. Second one is hydrogen production and distribution. Third one is stationary power. Uh, and uh, combined heat and power. Uh, we have early markets, so where are the quick wins for hydrogen and fuel cell technology? And then we have a number of cross-cutting issues that are important for everything. Um, we did a study with uh, McKinsey and all the automotive companies, uh, the oil companies, um, the utilities and some gas companies. and. Uh, they put all the figures in one basket and uh, what came out is uh, that there's a real um, um, interest for hydrogen fuel cell cars in, in the next future. And the next future, then I mean starting with 2014, 2015, you will see the first fuel cell cars on the road, even in the Netherlands. We want to have a fleet um, till the end of 2012 of about 115 fuel cell electric vehicles and about seven fuel cell buses. And most important is the most uh, main um, car manuf manufacturers are part of it, like Daimler, Opel, Volkswagen, Toyota and Honda. In difference to conventional battery electric vehicles, we have a real short refueling time. That means to get the 400 kilometer range aboard takes us three to four minutes to get the tank completely filled up. And then you can go again 400 kilometers. So when you no, don't have fuel stations, you can't sell a fuel cell car. Uh, when you don't have fuel cell cars, you don't need the fuel cell stations. So the, 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 main, the main thing is the chicken and egg story. That's what Germany is, uh, is uh, solving right now. And, uh, and we hope, as a Dutch uh, Hydrogen Association, that, uh, that the Netherlands will tack on the German plants because we are uh, nicely connected to Germany and it's easy to build a few stations here in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, so we have an infrastructure as well which means that we can sell also fuel cell cars in more or less the same period. And coming back to the wind energy again, we are very happy to um, have the first project running in Berlin. This year in April we had um, the first uh, green hydrogen delivery from the um, hybrid um, wind energy park in Prenzlau delivered um, the wind power gas into the hydrogen refueling stations at the Heerstrasse in Berlin. And this is very, a very important topic, as I already mentioned, with the numbers before. And yeah, we are ha happy that it's running and that we can show this technology will work. I'm uh, really honored to, uh, to, to announce this. Erik was a very big inventor. He, uh, he has a very creative mind and an extraordinary gift of making those things he was uh, thinking about able to, to make that into uh, working products. Well, the winner was Frank Denis, 
En Frank de Nies is een employee of uh, agentschap.nl, very Dutch name. But actually, actually, this is the subsidy office of the economic affairs in the Netherlands. What's, uh, what was the idea that to, to give you this, uh, this award? Well, um, you have uh, you've, uh, been a very important role in, uh, as a project leader in the uh, hygiene world in Holland. And you have made very nice connections and, and helped us really to start up as we are now. And Frank was in the beginning of the period, so let's say 2002, 2003, up till 2006, very important in order to spread the message not only among the companies uh, the, like Netstack and High Gear and, and, and these companies, but also in the, in the Hague at uh, the Ministries of Economic Affairs and, uh, and Traffic. And he did his job very well. I don't, you don't see it as much in Europe, but we've had some major power outages in the past year and a half. Um, San Diego blackout, August of 2011, very big. It was a part of Southern California that went black. And the grocery stores that were running our systems kept running. Um, Connecticut, where UTC Power is based, was hit by a hurricane last year. We actually had an earthquake and a hurricane and an October snowstorm that took down power for 90% of the state for 10 days. That's a long time for the U.S., the technology leader, <laughs> to be off the grid. So there's a big demand now for fuel cells to maintain that grid security. And last but not least, I think I want to thank High Gear uh, for supplying the rings that we are going to share together. <laughs>